Hello and welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Srinivas Padigar, former professor and chairman of the Department of Ancient Indian History and Epigraphy, Karnataka University, Dharwat. Today we are considering the module Early Chalukya Structural Temples Part 1, which forms part of the paper Art and Architecture of India. In this paper, we are trying to focus on the structural temples which have been built by the Chalukyas of Badami during the two centuries from 6th century to 8th century. These are very interesting because they are of great consequence for the later development of temple architecture in peninsular India, particularly in northern part of Karnataka. As such, uh, we can have a good idea of these uh, temples by having a look into various illustrations relating to them and uh, with some graphics with uh, the various parts of the temples marked on them. The objective of this uh, particular module is that by the end of the module you should be able to understand the background of structural temples in Karnataka, the rock medium that has been used for Chalukya structural temples, the different temple forms, their plans and other components, the development of Dravidian style temples of the Chalukyas, then important sculpture themes associated with the temples. Let us first begin with the emergence of structural architecture in Karnataka. The rock excavations for creating cave sanctuaries are found in the western Deccan from BC 3rd century onwards, but use of stone medium for building temples was not popular. Guptas built stone temples like those of Nachana Kutara and Bhumra Shiva temples and Diogad Vishnu temple in Madhya Pradesh and laid foundations of stone architectural study tradition. Between 2nd century BC and 6th century AD, brick, timber and mortar architectural tradition was very strong in peninsular India. This is evidenced in sites like Sarnati, Vodgaon Madhopur, Banavasi, Kudnapura, Halshi, etc. In the Deccan, the Chalukyas of Badami were the first to use stone extensively for structural temples. Let us have a brief uh, political background for the study of this architecture. The Chalukyas of Badami, during which period the structural temples we are studying were built, emerged on political scene in 543 with Badami in Bagalkot district of Karnataka as their capital. The first ruler was Pulakeshi I. He expanded the kingdom in all directions. And by the time of Pulakeshi II, the Chalukyas became masters of the Deccan between the Narmada and the Kavir. After a short lull between 642 and 654, they revived to their former glory. They disappeared from the political arena in 757 with the demise of Kirtivarma II, who ruled between 744 and 757. Uh, he was finally defeated by the Rashtrakutas who replaced the Chalukyas in the political scene of the Deccan. Let us now have a look at the stone architectural tradition built by the Chalukyas. Chalukyas have excavated cave architecture as well as built structural temples. Hence, they have nourished both cave architectural and structural architectural traditions. These monuments are built of reddish sandstone found in plenty in and around their capital Badami. These monuments are found in Badami, Mahakuta, Aihole, Patadakal and Alampur in addition to lesser sites. The temples of various plants and forms, northern Indian as well as southern Indian are noticed during this period. Let us have a look at the temple plans. The temple plans vary from simple to elaborate plans. Earlier temples are small and simple. They have square sanctum and a porch. For example, the temple near Ravalpadi cave at Aihole. 
the larger temples sponsored by the rulers in Badami and Mahakuta have a sanctum with walled ambulatory around, a pillared hall and a porch as for example the upper Shivalaya temple at uh, Badami, the Mahakuteshwara temple at Mahakut. In the last phase, the temples have ambitious plans. A sanctum, a small vestibule, a walled ambulatory, a large pillared hall with entrances from three sides through porches, a separate Nandi Mantapa, enclosure wall with, the, with gateways. As for example, Virupaksha temple and Malikarjuna temple at Patadakal. There are also, exceptionally, temples with triple sancta plan. For example, the Jambulinga temple at Badami. Some temples have apsidal end plan or horseshoe shaped plan. For example, the Durga temple at Aihole and the Shiva temple at Chikamahakuta. The hall type temples are also there. They have a large square hall and accommodate in that hall a rectangular sanctum at the rear. And in addition, they have a porch in front. A very good example of this is in Ayodhya, in the temple of Lad Khan. We are looking at a map now in which peninsular India is shown with the Chalukya, the, with, the, with the borders of the Chalukya Empire shown. Uh, Within that, within that, you see three different architectural traditional regions. The topmost is Nagara or North Indian. The bottommost is Dravida or South Indian. And there is an interface zone in between conforming to the, the Tungabhadra Valley and the Malaprabha Valley where we notice that temples belonging both to northern tradition and southern tradition are built. And this uh, is a very interesting phenomenon because later on in uh, the period of the Chalukyas of Kalyana, the area is expanded where you will find a mixture of northern and southern architectural traditions as late as 13th century. Let us now try to understand the basic temple forms of the Chalukyas. The Chalukya temples present significant varieties of temple forms. The basic varieties are five. First one is the Dravidian or South Indian style temples. Second one is Nagara, also called Rekha Nagara or North Indian style temples. The third one is Famsana, also known as Kadamba Nagara or a temple style which is akin to the Nagara style. The fourth one is Gajaprashta or apsidal end temples. Fifth and the last one is the Mandapa or hall type temples. The five pictures which you are seeing on this screen uh, actually represent the five temple forms which we mentioned just now. The first one is Dravida, the second one is Nagara, the third one is Famsana, the fourth one Kajaprashta and the fifth one Mandapa, of which the first one Dravida represents the South Indian type, the second one Rekha Nagara or Nagara represents the North Indian tradition, the Famsana one represents probably an antecedent stage of the Rekha Nagara, hence may be called Proto Nagara, then the fourth one is interesting because of its plan which is horse shoe shaped or English U shaped. It is called Gajaprashta in texts. Then we have the last one, which is a hall-like temple known as Mandapa temple. Let us now consider briefly the characteristics of uh, these temple forms. To begin with, the Dravidian temple form. The components of uh, the Dravidian temple form from bottom to top are Adhishtana, Bhitti, Prastara, Griva, Shikhara and Stupi. These are six in number and hence they define a temple called Shadvarga or six component Vimana as described in the South Indian architectural manuals. Each component has secondary components 
distinguished by physical detail. There are subforms called Nagara, which is square, Dravida, which is octagonal, and Vesara, which is circular. These are defined on the basis of the shape of the Shikara or the cupola. The illustration before you shows the different components of the temple marked on a real temple belonging to the Chalukyas of Badami. The temple is called Malagiti Shivalaya and it was built around 625. You can see the components beginning with Adhisthana at the lower end and passing through Bhitti, then Prastara, Griva, Shikara and uh, the last component namely Stupi is missing in this, uh, in this temple because it has fallen off. Then actually also you can identify the components called Vimana which represents the uh, the temple proper or the shrine proper in which the god is enshrined. The second one is Guda Mantapa, which is actually a hall with walls around. Then in front you have a Mukha Chatushki or a porch, a four pillared porch. Now, the Rekhanagara temple form. The external form of the Mula Prasada or Shrine proper actually defines the Rekha Nagara temple. The components from bottom to top in this case are the Pitha, Janga, Rekha Shikara, Gala, Amalaka and Kalasha. Each has a secondary component. Offset called Ratha from the central part of the pedestal continues on the wall and on to superstructure it is a very significant physical feature of a Rekha Nagara temple. The superstructure of the Rekha Nagara temple is curvilinear. The secondary components of the Shikara or the Rekha Shikara comprise of Bhumi Khandas, Karana Amalakas and Lata or Creeper. The prominent projection from the Shikara proper is known as Shukanasa. The Shikara or the superstructure actually terminates with Skanda or shoulders above which you find two components namely Amalaka and Kalasha. This picture shows you the various components marked on it. The temple is called Kalganatha and it is from Patadakal. It's a very evolved Rekha Nagara temple with almost all the components well demarcated. Uh, the basic components in this case you will notice from lower from the bottom to uh, the top Pitha which is the pedestal of the temple then Jangha which is the wall of the temple then you have the Rekha Shikhara which is the curvilinear superstructure of the temple then you have a Amalaka which is actually like Indian gooseberry fruit. Then at the top you have a Kalasha or a pot finial. There are other components like Bhumi Khanda, Lata, Karana Amalaka, etc. which are useful for identifying the number of stories in the superstructure. There is also a component called Shukanasa demarcated there which is a projection in the direction of uh, in the direction which the temple faces. The Famsana Prasada is the third type which we have to consider. This is a very simple temple form and looks like Rekha Nagara in some details. Its components are you have simple Pitha, plain walls, Kapota, Shikara formed of series of Kapota and uh, scheme of Kapota and subdued Jangha in receding tires, Gala, Amalaka and Kalasha. This may be probably described as proto Rekha Nagara in the sense that it was antecedent to the formulation of the Rekha Nagara superstructure proper. Here you can see it as a variant of Nagara. It has clearly defined stories or bhumis with Griva, Amalaka and Kalasha. Its walls like Nagara Rekha Prasada are severely plain, but like Rekha Prasada, it may have a three Ratha plan.
In this picture, you see the various parts of the Famsana temple demarcated from bottom to top. The first component is Pitha, the second one representing the wall is Jangha, the third one is Cornice or Kapota, the fourth one is Bhumi Jangha or the wall of the upper story and uh, to indicate that it is upper story wall, a line of uh, pillarets can be seen on its body. Then you have the Famsana Shikhara which, has, which rises in a small curve in receding tires. Then you have Gala or neck like part crowned by Amalaka looking like Indian gooseberry fruit. Then Kalasha, the pot finial. So most of these components can be seen also in a Rekha Nagara temple. That is why we try to identify this as a proto Nagara temple. Let us now consider the features of the fourth temple form namely Gajaprashta or the apsidal end temple. On this side you can see the pictures of the plan as well as the temple. Literally Gajaprashta means elephant's back. On plan it looks like English U. The Shikara of such a, such a temple should look like elephant's back in appearance. But Chalukya temples make an exception to this. They have as superstructure a Rekha Nagara type of superstructure or northern style superstructure. You are seeing the example of Durga temple at Aihole. So a more detailed plan of that temple here. Uh, you can see how the English U-shaped plan runs like and in Indian, in Indian text this type of a plan is called Chapakara because it resembles a bow. This is the temple proper as seen from the side known as Durga temple. It was built around 700. It can be called a Vijaprashta temple. Now we come to the last temple form namely the Mandapa or hall type temple. In this temple the sanctum is actually accommodated at the rear within a large hall. Exteriorly it looks like a secular hall structure rather than a temple. It has no superstructure of the kind we see in the Dravida or the Nagara temples. The central roofing is flat and the sides may be sloping. The Lad Khan temple at Ayuhale is a very good example of this temple type. Uh, here in this plan you can see that large square hall with multiple pillars and a small rectangular shrine at the rear and a large porch in front of the hall. In uh, appearance this looks more like a secular structure as I told you earlier and because of this appearance scholars at one point of time thought that this was an inimitation of a, a village assembly hall and therefore it must have represented the earliest temple in India. However, scholars have studied this meticulously and they have come to the conclusion that its appearance is not because of the the antiquity of the temple but because of the function for which possibly it was used namely for conducting socio-religious functions like samskaras of the Hindus, upanayana, annaprashana, marriage etc. Now we come to the second part of uh, this module in which we will focus on the development of the Dravidian temples proper with examples. In this we can distinguish early phase temples from the later phase temples. Early phase temples belong to a period up to say 650 and after 650 the second phase may be said to have begun. There are some distinct differences between the two which may be mark marked here. In the early phase temples the 
plan is simple. The temples are small with sanctum and porch. They are called uh, single story temples or alpa vimanas. There are some double story temples also having similar plan and simplicity. Preference is given to square or octagonal shikhara or cupola. Those temples which are built by the members of the ruling family have a walled ambulatory inside. The upper Shivalaya at Padami is a good instance of this. The stories of superstructure are not very well defined. Again for this, upper Shivalaya is an example. The second story's height is emphasized. Then there is no edicular conformity seen from the story to story. Here you are seeing a simple uh, Dravidian temple located near Rawalfadi cave at Aihole, dated by scholars to the 6th century. You will notice here only a sanctum and a porch. And sanctum is very simple even in its external appearance, such as a simple pedestal is there or pitha, then there is a wall which is almost plain, then you have a kapota or cornice, then there is a series of vyalas, a component known as vyala mala, and over that is the neck or the griva proper. On that you see the cupola or the shikhara, which is square in shape in this case. The pot finial called stupi is missing. This picture which you are seeing is actually a picture of the upper Shivalaya at Padami, which seems to represent incipient stage in the development of Dravidian architecture in early Chalukya region. What is noteworthy here is though the adicular formations are clear and the ground story, the upper story has been very much emphasized and the other stories above, smaller, they do not have edicular definitions done properly. Apart from that, you have a griva, which is not very well defined, then a square uh, cupola or shikhara, which identifies this temple as a Nagara Vimana. The second picture which you are seeing in front is that of Lower Shivalaya at Badami. The important difference you see between the, the earlier Upper Shivalaya and this Lower Shivalaya is in the shape of the super, uh, superstructure or in the, the details of the superstructure. See, so upper story here also is very well emphasized. But a harak with well-defined adicules called kuta or square temple model and uh, shala or rectangular temple model, they have been formed very properly in this case. Then you have a neck which is somewhat hidden in this case. And above that you have the cupola which is octagonal. And over that you have a stupi. Now because of this octagonal shikhara or cupola, we describe such temple as a dravida vimana. You are seeing another dravida vimana here. This time the Malagiti Shivalaya at Badami. It is dated around 625 and uh, it doesn't seem to be a royal temple because it doesn't have an internal ambulatory around the sanctum proper. But otherwise, in this case, you have to note the well-defined kuta and shala edicules for ground thala and the absence of kakshasana. Kakshasana is a northern feature found in the porch, an arrangement for sitting in the porch. So that arrangement is absent here as in the case of the South Indian temples. The illustration you are seeing is from Ayuhale. It represents the Meguti Jaina temple. It is one of the earliest structural dated temples of the Chalukyas. It is dated to 634 in the reign of Palakeshi II, the greatest of the Chalukya rulers. 
It was built for Jinendra or Jaina Tirthankara by Ravikirti, probably a court poet of Palakeshi II. This temple uh, has undergone alterations from time to time. And though you see today as a very complex structure, earlier it was very simple. It had a large hall and a small uh, vestibule-like projection in front and a four-pillared porch originally. Now it has been extended by adding a large pillared hall in front. What is of note, uh, what is noteworthy in this case is the formation of the edicules without the hara component. So at the corners you have uh, what you may call kuta edicule without of course the kuta being present. At the uh, the intermediary space between the kutas, you have oblong projections which would have once uh, uh, had the shala edicule or shala uh, part of the harem which is missing now. But what is definite about its affinity to South Indian Dravida type is the the detail of the plinth which comprises of the principal mouldings prescribed in southern Vastu texts like Jagati, Kumuda, Kantha and Kapota. We are seeing now the Mahakuteshwara temple at Mahakuta. This is a royal temple and the earliest donation to this is known by 597 AD. Uh, it appears that the temple itself has undergone changes in course of time. So some of the interesting features we notice here uh, in this case. For example, you do not have the kuta projections at the corners of the temple, which is an essential component in the case of a South Indian uh, Vimana. Uh, but in the upper stories, you can see very well defined adicules of Kuta and Shala. The cupola or the Shikara itself is octagonal and therefore it may be described as a Dravida Vimana. This is the plan of that temple. And you can see an internal ambulatory around the sanctum in this. And there is also a separate Nandi Mantapa in front. So these are features which seem to suggest that the temple has undergone renovation in course of time and uh, perhaps it belongs to the uh, beginning of the later phase of the Chalukya architecture. Now let us consider the developments of Dravidian temple in later phase. What are the changes that we see here? The changes we see include the introduction of a vestibule between the sanctum and the hall. Then there are well-defined adicular kuta, shala and panjara sometimes. Then we have well-defined stories with square, octagonal or circular shikhara. And the larger complexes appear in this time. They have separate Nandi Mantapa. They have a prakara or parivara shrines around the main temple. Then they have gateways in the front and the back. This of course may be due to the influence of the Pallava architecture. Then we have the incorporation of northern style components into southern style temple like Shukanasa and Kakshasana in this phase. There are bold niches in walls which accommodate relief images of various gods and goddesses. The example you are seeing in front is the famous Sagameshwara temple at Patavakal. Originally it was named Vijayeshwara after its patron King Vijayaditya. This was probably built around 720 but uh, it was left unfinished though it was consecrated. This is indicated by the fact that its wall sculptures are incomplete. You can see the 
way in which the plan has developed into a complex one. You have a large sanctum with a circumambulatory path around, then a vestibule-like component followed by a large multipillared hall. And originally, this hall had entrances from three sides, namely north, east and south. So these kind of uh, developments are noticed, particularly in the later phase. You are seeing here another uh, example of a South Indian temple or Dravidian temple of Nagara form built in the second phase. So what is interesting here is that this temple doesn't have an interior Pradakshinapatha or the ambulatory path. So we describe this temple as Nirandara Vimana. It is called Nagara Vimana because it has a square Shikhara above. You can also see deep niches in its walls. The example which we are seeing is a very interesting one and it comes from Alampur in Andhra Pradesh. It is known as Taraka Brahma temple dated around 700. What is important about this temple is the presence of a small vestibule with a superstructure overhead called Shukanasa. The Shukanasa is an element of North Indian temple. Here it is mixed with the South Indian temple. That is why it is a very interesting feature. We will see such a mixture repeated in Patadakal in later Dravidian temples. This one is one of the most elaborate temples of the Chalukyas of Padami, built in the last phase of their rule. The patron for this temple was Loka Mahadevi, the queen of Vikramaditya II, who ruled between 733 and 744. The temple would date around 740. What is important to notice in this temple is the elaborate plan of the temple. You can see two porches and there is a third porch on the northern side also, not seen in this picture. And uh, you will see its walls covered with number of sculptures drawn from Shaiva themes, Vaishnava themes, etc. And apart from that, you have well-defined South Indian temple components for that. Noteworthy also is the fact that some North Indian temple features have been added to this, like for example, seating arrangement in the porches, which is called Kakshasana. The same temple, looked at from a side, gives you another important uh, feature of the North Indian temple incorporated into a South Indian temple. You see in front of the superstructure proper, a projection which resembles the nose of a parrot and this is called Shukanasa for that reason. Shukanasa means the nose of a parrot and uh, this is a North Indian feature. The incorporation of such a feature is significant because hereafter in the region of Karnataka most of the temples built in Dravidian style they have invariably this feature called Shukanasa. That is why we may say that uh, the foundations of the Karnataka Dravida tradition of architecture was laid down during the last phase of the Chalukyas of Badami. The picture before you presents the complex nature of the plan which is followed in building the, uh, the Virupaksha temple at Patadakal. You can see that the main temple is situated within a walled uh, prakara with small shrines along its uh, interior periphery. These small shrines are meant for enshrining secondary deities like uh, Dikpalagas or the guardians of the quarters, Saptamatrikas, uh, or Vishnu and his forms and so on and so forth. Apart from that, you can see also a separate uh, four-pillared Nandimantapa situated in front. And the prakara itself has at both ends, that is east and west, gateways for entry and exit. So this kind of plan seems to have been drawn 
from Pallava influence. Let us now consider the sculptural themes found on the Dravidian temples. Obviously, the sculptural themes depend upon the sect affiliation. So, if it is Vaishnava, then you would have more Vaishnava images. If it is Saura, you would, you would have more uh, images pertaining to Surya. If it is Shaiva, it will have more images of Shiva. But uh, normally, the presence of all deities with prominence to this sect is noticed. That is to say, in a Shiva temple, you may find not only Shiva, but also Vishnu and other deities. Then various forms of deities are used to be represented on the temples, such as incarnations of Vishnu, then various forms of Shiva, then Durga, and also the sun god, Surya. Apart from that, there is also the tradition of decorating the temple with narratives drawn from Puranic themes and epic themes like Mahabharata, Ramayana, Bhagavata, Shaiva Puranas, etc. And rarely you will also find in the second stage or the last stage the Panchatantra themes represented. Here you are seeing some of the images of Vishnu's forms found on the Dravidian temples. The first one is that of Govardhanadara Krishna. The second one is Narasimha killing Hiranyakashipu. And the third one is the Vamana avatara of Vishnu, depicting him as Trivikrama. In this slide, you see these decorations on the superstructure and uh, images installed in the sub-shrine. The first one is from the ceiling of the porch of the Virupaksha temple at Patavakal. It represents Surya with all the attributes associated with him as well as the paraphernalia. The second one actually represents Goddess Durga killing Mahisha. And this image is a very beautiful image installed in a sub-shrine in the Virupaksha temple. Here you see some four forms of Shiva. The first one is what is called Sthanaka Shiva or Shiva standing in equipoise posture. The second one is Nataraja or dancing form of Shiva. The third one is Lingodbhava, a form which represents the, the superiority of Shiva above Brahma and Vishnu. And last one is actually a Dwarapala guarding a Shaiva temple. I mentioned about the use of the narrative themes on the Dravidian temples. The one which you are seeing is from the upper Shivalaya at Badami, which was a Vaishnava temple. And on the Adhisthana or the Pitha of that temple, you will see the narrative of episodes of Ramayana. Here you are seeing Kumbhakarana being awakened by the Rakshasas for sending him to war. The two sculptural representations which you are seeing on the screen are from the Virupaksha temple at Patavakal, dated 740. These are drawn from Ramayana. The first one represents Jatayu fighting with Ravana when he is carrying away Sita. The second one represents uh, the fight between Vali and Sukriva, Sugriva with uh, Rama and Lakshmana shown in the background. Now let us summarize what we have studied in this particular module. We saw here that the temples of various plants and forms have been built by the Chalukyas of Badami. They range from simple to complex temples and were built between 6th and 8th centuries. We also saw that there were five principal forms known as Dravidian, Rekhanagara, Famsana, Gajaprashta, Mandapa, each with a distinct physical form. Then we also noticed that the Dravida temples developed from very sing simple uh, single-storied to complex four-storied structures. Then we saw that in the last leg of the Chalukyas of Badami, 
the foundations of a Karnataka Dravida tradition are laid, in which you notice a blend of some northern features like Shukanasa and Kakshasana into the uh, southern Dravidian tradition. We also noticed that the sculpture on Dravidian temples are based on deities of various sects and sometimes they draw from Puranic and epic themes. Thank you very much.